Just like we had the parallel axis theorem for all the area moments of inertia and products of inertia, now we have to have the parallel axis theorem for the mass moments of inertia. When we're dealing with any object, it's unlikely that the centroid of that object is always going to lie on the only axis we're interested in. So what we want to be able to do is relate the moment of inertia about the centroid to the moment of inertia about any other axis. In this case, it looks kind of like the AD squared that we had before, it's just MD squared, where this is the mass moment of inertia going through the centroid of your object, and this is the total mass of the object, and D is still the distance between your two axes. So any, as soon as we know what these centroidal axes are, we can set up a chart or anything else to find out what the mo mass moment of inertia is about an axis that's not equal to the centroid. And we can do this in Cartesian form using these same Pythagorean relationships that we had with the x, y, and z coordinates of our object. m is the total mass of your object. So we're going to use that parallel axis theorem in all of our charts. And another thing that you should be aware of as a special case here is the radius of gyration. Like with the area, our radius, is, our radius of gyration is the square root of i over m, where m is the total mass of your object. A sort of way to think about what a radius of gyration is, is if you have this, the same picture we had before, where your mass, some potato, looks like this, and you have an axis with a, a torque on it. I is the integral of r squared dm. This is the resistance to the angular acceleration caused by that q. The radius of gyration is the distance away from this axis that you'd have to put a point mass equal to the total mass of your object so that that Q produces the same I. So M is the integral of dm, and this I will be the same for both of these situations. The parallel axis theorem then, if you take what we just had a minute ago in terms of your Ks, is the K for your new axis, the radius of gyration for your mass about its new axis K, is related to the K for the centroid by K squared equals K bar squared, where this is the centroidal radius of gyration plus d squared 